Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Hartford Whalers throwback franchise mode here in NHL 22. So in the last episode we had to simulate the entire season over again because of the fact um, I lost my save file. But we managed to make the playoffs and we are going to be taking on the Washington Capitals in the first round of playoffs. Obviously in real life the Washington Capitals did go to the 1998 Stanley Cup Finals. So um, if uh, we lose to them hopefully they go on to get at least the Stanley Cup Finals to make it a little bit more realistic. But... Should be an interesting matchup, but uh, their team is actually way better than they look. Like, they only simulated 36, 28, 12, and 6, which is not a great record. Uh, but their roster is way better than it looks. Or than it sounds, I should say. Um, as you can see, this is what their team looks like. You got great players like Oates, you got Bondra, you got really good center depth like Juno, Smolenski, Pavonka, and some really good complementary wingers like Dale Hunter playing on the fourth line is actually pretty insane. And then defensively, you got the 1-2 punch of Gonchar and Housley, which is always really good offensively. Gonchar had 54 points this year. He's on the uprise. Phil Housley had 60 points as well, so very good top two there. And then really complimentary players like Klee, Kote, Johansson, and Tenorti. And then they also have the good goaltender too in Olaf Kolzig, who had a really good season last year. This season, he kind of dropped off a bit in terms of his goals against and save percentage, but... Um, yeah, he's still a really good goaltender, and then they have a really solid backup in Ranford. So, in general, this team is really a lot better than they say. And I'm kind of scared that we're going to get knocked out in the first round, but um, hopefully we can beat them and get to that second round again because obviously last year we took out a tough team in the Pittsburgh Penguins, and then we lost to the Montreal Canadiens in the second round. So, we'd like to get back to that second round if possible and hopefully beyond that as well as Montreal is not even in the playoffs this year, which is kind of interesting. So... St. Louis is the defending Stanley Cup champion as well, so they're in the playoffs, so hopefully they don't win another Stanley Cup in this. So, Anyways, uh, let's get into this first game against the Capitals on home ice, see what we could do here. Obviously, if this was the actual 97-98 season, we'd be Carolina now, but uh, let's see what happens in game number one. Let's see if we could get ourselves a win here. First period of game one. And it's 2-1 Washington. I don't like that. A shorthanded goal from Dale Hunter. And then Kevin Stevens ties it up on the power play for us. It's actually on the same power play, which is kind of interesting. That was five seconds apart. So they must have scored. And then right off the faceoff, Kevin Stevens must have got a goal out of that. Um, and then Steve Connor Walchuk scores a late goal on Sean Burke. The shots are 10-10. And it's a 2-1 game for the Caps. So pretty even first period for the most part. Can we get a way to tie this game up in the second period or take the lead somehow? Second period. Ooh, that's not good. 4-1 to one caps. Two power play goals, one from Joe Juno and one from Phil Housley. And looks like we're going to lose game one more than likely unless we have a good comeback in the third period. Shots are 21-20 to 20 in favor of the caps. Uh, Sean Burke is not playing like he did during the regular season, at least right now. Let's see what happens in the third period, see if we can get something going at least just to give us some momentum for next game. Because this game should be probably right off the up. Dale Hunter scores another power play goal. And our penalty kill is really struggling right now. So I might have to make some adjustments going into game number two. Because that's three power play goals against in this first game alone. Power play late for us. We do not convert. And yeah, we're going to lose game one. By a final score of 5-1. to one, As Olaf Kolzig shuts the door pretty much on us. I kind of figured that could happen. Because this Caps team is looking a lot better than I expected. Stevens from Deneen and Manderville is their only goal. So that's our second line. Or actually, that's our yeah, that's our power play line. Because Manderville's on the power play. Hmm. Yeah, that's not a great performance from Sean Burke. We did use Mazzotti last year in the playoffs. I might have to call him up at some point. Hmm. Yeah, let's make some adjustments already. I don't really trust necessarily that we're going to win this because... Caps just making it into the playoffs. They look like they could be a team that goes to the Stanley Cup Finals easily. Unless all these other teams are way better. Which would be kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, let's make some line adjustments here. I don't like that first game from Sean Burks. So I think I'm going to turn to Jay Shagir for game two. And I am going to reconfigure our lines a little bit, I think. That third line was not great during the regular season. So let's move Kron up. Move Arvidsson down. Just to give it a little bit better chemistry. We'll also take Kevin Holler out of the lineup for now and throw in Alex Godinyuk. Try and change that up a bit. And yeah, we'll just see how that works. Hopefully that gives our team a little bit of a boost. If needed, we could call up some guys from the minors because we do have Stu Grimson down there. We also have Bouchard, and we also do have Doug Litzer, who we claimed on waivers in the last episode. So we could call up Doug Litzer if we wanted to. But let's see what happens in Game 2. 
might need to make some drastic changes for this team to win games. As I feel like we're just going to be not necessarily cheesed because they are a very good team. But I feel like uh, we've met ourselves a very solid matchup even though Washington didn't have the greatest season. First period of game number two. And it's one nothing us. That's a much better period. Nelson Emerson scores on the power play. That's good. Beating Ole Holzig. Shots are 16-6 to though in favor of the Caps. So we're getting outplayed, but we managed to get the lead, which is good. So a good bounce back period for our defense. And a good first period of play in his first ever playoff game for J.S. Shaguer. Can we add to our lead here in the second period? Second period, 2 nothing. Let's go. That's exactly what we need. Another power play goal from Keith Primo. So our power play is off to a really good start as well. So our power play has been doing good, but the penalty kill hasn't. So hopefully we uh, are doing better penalty kill wise in this game. If not, we might have to make some adjustments to it. Shots are 24 to 22 in favor of Washington. So now we're we must have had a really good uh, period for shots because they were outshooting us by quite a bit. But now it's a pretty close game in terms of shots. We still have a two nothing lead. Let's see what happens in this third period. See if we can lock it down and tie the series headed to Washington. Power play opportunity, we do not convert on those two power plays, which is kind of a surprise. With how it's been in, Kravchuk scores, let's go, who we brought in in the offseason, and Kevin Dini also scores, the captain of the team, I'm pretty sure. Good bounce back game for sure. Maybe we'll just keep rolling with Jaguar, which seems weird because Sean Burke was so good during the regular season, but a shutout in his playoff debut, it looks like, for J.S. Jaguar, as we're going to win 4 to nothing and tie the series. Nelson Emerson from Andrew Cavendish and Jeff Sanderson. Primo from Manderville and Stevens. Kravchuk from Stevens and Primo. And Deneen from Shvela and Sanderson. Not too bad. Let's take a look at this. Couple two-point players. No minus players. Obviously because we didn't allow goals. And yeah, Jay Shagir picking up a shutout in his playoff debut. Maybe we should run with Jiggy just because of the fact in real life. Obviously with the Ducks in 2003, he was insanely good. So maybe he's a playoff goaltender. Primo gets second star and Stevens the third star. So I think we got to go with Shea Gare again for game number three. Until he loses a game, might as well keep up with the hot goaltender, right? And then maybe uh, we'll go back to Sean Burke if for some reason Shea has a very bad game, which could honestly happen because he's a young goalie. So we'll go back to goaltenders and we'll go back to Shea And then we'll go back to Burke again. Maybe if Shea loses this game, we'll see what happens though. So, here we go. Game number three. We're not going to make any other adjustments to our lineup. Let's see what happens. See if we could take a 2-1 series lead as the series shifts to Washington. I don't remember what the arena is called. I think it's like the MCI Center or something maybe at this point. Maybe not. Because I've looked at so many different uh, arena names. I just can't remember what this was called at this point in time. But anyways, let's see if we can take a 2-1 series lead here. First period, 2-2. Two, two. So, not the best period for Jaguar. Considering he didn't allow anything last game, but uh, those two goals come from Peter Bonder for Washington. Ours are from Primo and Chason. One of them was a power play goal. So our power play is continuing to be really hot, but not the best first period defensively. Two goals against on nine shots, but we scored two goals on 13 shots, so at least it's a tie after one. Can we take the lead in the second period? Second period, 3-2, let's go. Keith Primo scores again. Keith Primo seems to be like a bit of a playoff player in terms of this because last year in the playoffs he was over point per game and so far he's off to a really good start in this playoff run as well. Shots are 25 to 16 in favor of us and we are up by one goal. Can we add some insurance to our lead here? Let's see what happens. Come on boys, we're out shooting them. Let's just get insurance and ride this game into the sunset. <laughs> Come on, please. Oh, Connor Waldchuk's going to tie the game at three apiece. And then Howard Chuck scores to make it 3-3. The two Chucks score, but Steven Rice has an answer for us at least. Wasn't expecting that. Penalty kill. A long penalty kill. Don't know who took like a five minute major, but we kill it off. And we are going to overtime in game three. So this has been a pretty even series for the most part. We had a very bad first game. We had a very good second game. And now this game is going to OT. Shots are 36-27 to in favor of us. It is a 4-4 game. Who is going to be the OT hero here? Let's see what happens. Maybe it's going to be Godinyuk since we threw him into the lineup instead of Kevin Hall around that one point. We're definitely out shooting them, but Kolzig is keeping their team in it. Penalty kill. Nicely done, boys. Good job killing penalties in OT at a power play chance. We do not convert either. 
that's kind of surprising because both teams' power plays have been really good to start the series. But now that I'm converting here, and we had another power play late, but we didn't convert. Shots are 44 to 38 in favor of us. We're going to double overtime. We know it's going to end quick. Who's going to be the hero? I'm just going to throw out a guess that it's going to be Jeff Sanderson. Let's see what happens. Penalty kill. Uh, we kill it off, and we score after the penalty kill, and it's Merrick Malik. Merrick Malik of all people. Of course, it's the guy that scores through his legs, though, against uh, Washington in the shootout back in, like, 06, but that is awesome. Merrick Malik with the huge OT winning goal. You just never know who's going to step up on this team. Shots were 47-40 to 40 at the end of that game, so very offensive game. Both goalies actually played pretty well, I'd say, for the most part, even though they allowed a decent amount of goals. So Primo from Chason is Fela, Chason from Manderville and Stevens, Primo from Sanderson and Stevens, Rice from Sanderson and Chason, and Malik from Arvidsson and Manderville. Not too bad. Let's see if there's any badly minus players in this game. Uh, a couple minus one players, but nothing insanely bad. And then, yeah, Jaguar had an okay game. He faced 40 shots, allowed four goals. That goals against is pretty good. I will take it. Three stars of the game. Peter Bondra gets first star with two goals, one assist, and he had eight hits, which is kind of uncharacteristic of him. Primo gets second star, two goals, and three hits, and Chason had three points as the third star. So we have a 2-1 series lead on the Caps. Can we take a 3-1 series lead, headed home, and have a chance to close the series after that? We'll see what happens. We're going to go... Should we go back to Sean Burke? I feel like we should go back to Sean Burke, because Jaguar did have a little bit of a rough game. It wasn't the worst game in the world, but maybe he needs a little bit of a break, and then Sean Burke could come back in. Like, definitely jaguar has been the better of the two goalies, but let's give it back to Burke, because he's our starting goalie. Let's see if he can do good, and if he can't do good, then we'll go back to Jaguar, obviously. So let's give him another chance and see if he could uh, give us a 3-1 series lead here, since the team is definitely playing a lot better. Come on, Berkey. Let's see what happens in game number four. Can we take a 3-1 series lead? First period... 2 nothing caps. Yikes. So Sean Burke might not get the play a lot much in this playoff run, depending on if we even get past this first round, as Juno and Howarchuk have goals. Another power play goal against, so we should probably address that penalty kill. Shots are 14-8 in favor of us, but we're down 2 nothing after the first. Can we find a way to get back into this game in a second? Second period. Okay, that's a lot better. Housley made it 3 nothing, but Jeff O'Neill and Jeff Sanderson score. And we're only down by one goal, Rauchum 25-18, so we have the momentum on our side. Can we find a way to tie this game up in the third period and maybe take the lead? Let's see what happens. Come on, boys. You guys got the momentum in shots. You got the game back to a one-goal game after being down 3 nothing. I believe in you to tie it up. I just don't know who is going to score it for us. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Power play. We do not convert. Another penalty kill. Nicely done. Come on, guys. Who wants to tie the game up? Who wants to tie it up? Anybody? Andrew Castles, maybe? No. Mark Tenorti gets the empty netter. And unfortunately, we're going to have a tie series headed home at two games apiece. So, Neil from Chason and Emerson and Sanderson from Castles and Deneen. Yeah, Ole Kolzig stole that game. We had a two-goal surge, and then we just could not get anything else past him. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to J.S. Jaguar, I guess, because Sean Burke's lost both of the games he's played so far. I mean, he wasn't terrible in that last one, but... Hmm. I feel like this is a type of series that could go seven games, the way it's been going back and forth. But yeah, we'll go back to J.S. Jaguar, and we'll keep the rest of the roster the same. Let's see if J.S. Jaguar can get us that 3-2 series lead headed back to Washington afterwards. As we're on home ice, let's see what we could do here. Come on, guys, let's use this to our advantage. Let's give our fans a win here. First period of game five. Two one caps. Don't like it. Wesley opens the scoring for us. That's good. But then Joe Juno scores and Brian Smolinski scores. He hadn't scored at all in the series so far. And we're down by a goal going into the second. Shots are twelve to ten in favor of the Caps. Can we tie this game up into second period, please? Second period. 6-3, to three. us, what the heck is that offense? Wow, I was not expecting that. Going from down 2-1 to one to being up 6-3 to three is really great. We outscored them 5-1 to one in the second period. I feel like we're going to lose 7-6 to six, though for some weird reason. 
I just I feel that way. I don't know. So Deneen didn't tie the game up at two for us. Then O'Neal scores, Karan scores, Sanderson scores. And then Bondra got them back in the game again a little bit. And then Chase on scores. And yeah, we're up by three goals. We're being outshot 22 to 21. Let's lock down this game to the third and get Jaguar another win if possible. Power play goal from Nelson Emerson to start the third, seven to three. Never mind on the seven to six loss, but wasn't expecting all that offense out of nowhere because we only had one goal in the first period, but since then we've scored six goals. So, and Ole Kolze got pulled. Ranford's in net. And we are going to win by a score of 7-3, to three, and we're one win away from going back to that second round. So Wesley from Kravchuk and O'Neal. Deneen from Wesley. O'Neal from Chase on his Fela. Kron from Wesley and O'Neal. Sanders from Castles and Kravchuk. Chase on from O'Neal and Emerson. And Emerson from Castles and Deneen. So Jeff O'Neal had a four-point game, which is uncharacteristic of him because he's not been the best offensively for us. Wesley had three points. Deneen, Chason, Castles, Emerson, and Kravchuk all had two points. And a couple one-point players. A couple guys were plus four in that game as well, which is great. But there was minus two from Castles because most of his points, I guess, were power play points. And Jesha Gear didn't have the best game, but at least he got another win. And like his first beard was probably the roughest point, I guess, for him. But Jeff O'Neill gets first start, Wesley the second start, and Emerson the third. Okay, so we're one win away from going back to that second round. It's been a bit of a back-and-forth matchup between uh, these two teams so far. We lost game one, then we won game two, then we won game three, then they uh, won game four, and then we won game five. So very back-and-forth. Is there a chance for us to close out this series and get to that second round? Detroit's off to the second round, so that's realistic. Obviously, if we lose this, hopefully the Caps at least go to the Stanley Cup Finals to make it realistic, but I would prefer us to end up winning obviously so we're going to go back to Jesha Gare again even though he did have another rough game just because I don't really know if I trust Sean Burke yet we will start Sean Burke in the second round if we get there though just because obviously he's the better overall of the goalies but can we knock out the Washington Capitals and get to that second round let's see what happens here we're in Washington let's do this boys first period one nothing. There you go. Good defense appeared in Jeff O'Neill, who had the four points in the last game, starts off with another point, which is great. Five points in his last two games, or last few periods, I should say. Shots are 12 to 10 in favor of the Caps, but we're up by one goal. Can we add to the lead in our second period? Second period, two nothing. Let's go. Keith Primo scores on Bill Ranford, so I guess Coles had got yanked early, which is kind of weird. Shots are 24-24. We're up by two goals. Let's just lock down this period and get ourselves into that second round. Let's see what happens. Come on, boys. Just get some more insurance, and we should be good. There we go. Robert Caron makes it 3 to nothing. Looks like we should be going to the second round at this rate. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Short-handed goal from Andrew Castles, and that should definitely do it. We're going to be going back to the second round again. And hopefully whoever we are playing in the second round, we can manage to beat this time around. As we're going to win 4 nothing in this game as well. So that's another shutout for Jay Shiger, actually. Yeah, jagir has got two shutouts so far in this playoff run. He's actually living up to his uh, Anaheim Duck status, I guess you should say. So Jeff O'Neill from Emerson, Primo from King and Stevens, Kron from Shale and Emerson, and Castles from Wesley. That was Castles' first goal of the playoffs. Hmm. So he hadn't scored a lot, but he's been probably picking up a lot of assists, so that's okay. Kron was a plus three. That's great to see. And yeah, another shutout for Jay Jaguar. Three stars, Jaguar, O'Neal, and Emerson as we head to the second round. Let's take a look at the player stats for that first round as we knock out the Caps in six games. Don't know who we're going to be facing, but let's take a look at these player stats. And yeah, Jay Shiger has definitely been our better two of the two playoff goalies, but we will start Sean Burke for the second round just because we're not paying him to be a uh, backup goalie, you know. So Primo had four goals and uh, five points in the first round, which is really good. Castles had the reverse of that one goal, four assists. And then Manderville had four assists in six games. So center point production was really good. Uh, Sanderson, six points in six games. Same with Stevens, really good, but Stevens needs to score a little bit more. Corona had two goals, King had only one assist, and Arvidsson only had one assist. So, some guys are really underproducing in this playoff run so far. 
Um, O'Neal had six points, Emerson had six points, which is kind of impressive, and Deneen had five points. Rice had only had one point, which is a goal. So everybody under four core had a point at least, but some guys way less than others. Like, pretty much our top six did good, except for King, I'd say, since he's the only one that's actually in the top six. Defensively, Chason was really good, six points in six games. Wesley and Shvela were really good. Kravchuk also helped out offensively. And then Merrick Malik obviously had that one game winning goal. And then Kevin Haller played only one game. And then Godinik has been playing really well defensively, plus four and five games after he didn't play a single game in the regular season. Goalie wise, Jay Shiger was perfect in the playoffs, 4 0, with two shots and 9.48 and a 1.59. While Sean Burke was 0-2 with an 868 and a 403. So you can see why I want to maybe start Jaguar next round too, but we will start Sean Burke at least for game one. And then we should go back to Jiggy probably, if that is the case, that Burke is gonna to continue to lose games. But let's see who we're facing in round two. I'm kinda of curious on that. Who is going to be? It is going to be the Pittsburgh Penguins. So we have a rematch of the first round last year. So we're going to be taking on Lemieux and Yager and stuff again, which is going to be kind of scary. They're 7-2-1 in our last 10 games going into the playoffs. They finished 42-29-10-1, but we do have home ice advantage just like we did last year. Winner of this series will face the Flyers or the Rangers, which I feel like was the case last year, maybe. And then Detroit and Chicago are in the second round as well as San Jose and Phoenix. Interesting. So St. Louis, the team that won last year, is out in the first round. Hmm. Let's take a look at that Penguins team and see if they went through any changes since we last played them. I think they probably did, though. A top line of Ed Olchuk, Mary Lemieux, obviously, and Yarmer Yager. Insane top line. And they simulate like an insane top line. Second line of Rick Tockett, Ron Francis is still there, and Stu Barnes. Really good second line. Third line, they have Craig Johnson, Greg Johnson. That's a little bit of a ton twister. Interesting. So they brought in Craig Johnson. Uh, Gary Volk is also there. And in the fourth line of Dave Roach, Jamie Baker, who they brought in, and Alex Hicks. So, hmm. Yeah, their center depth is obviously still really good. Wingers on the bottom six are really weak, I'd say. But uh, they're still a really good team, obviously, with Yager and Lemieux. And then defensively, Kaspreitis and Hatcher. Konstantinov they brought in, which is a little bit weird. They also have Terry Karkner, who they must have brought in from Florida. And then Joe Ricci is also there now, and Frederick Olsen. So they added a couple defensemen. Terry Karkner, yeah, was in Florida. Came over, and he was a plus 29 this season. Very physical player. And then Konstantinov, obviously, is very physical as well. He played 72 games this year. And, yeah, played pretty damn good. Does he throw a lot of hits like I made him do? I'm curious on that. And not as much hits as I thought he would. Hmm. Uh, they also brought in Joe Ricci, I guess, from Washington, who we just beat. He's also quite physical. And then in terms of their goaltending, they have Patrick Aleem as the starting goalie now. Interesting. So Aleem is the starter in Pittsburgh. And the backup is Tom Barrasso. Depth-wise, they have Gord Hines, who they brought in, Rob Zettler. And Peter Nedved is out with an injury. So they didn't lose Nedved, but damn. So once Nedved's back into the lineup... Yeah, they're never going to be a really good team, I guess. Uh, Dave Roach would get scratched if that's the case. But let's take a look at how long Nedved's out for. Because hopefully we don't have to face him. Because that could give us a little bit of a leg up in this uh, second round matchup. Um, he's out with a mild concussion until May the 5th. So he will be back for this round, unfortunately, it looks like. Because he will be back yet for a Game 4 situation in Pittsburgh. So hopefully we're not uh, fighting off elimination at that point. Um, but yeah, it's going to be definitely a very interesting second round. Final thing I want to check is how they've been simulating in the playoffs, and then I'll be it for this episode. Like, how is their goals against and all that stuff? So, uh, let's just sort this by wins to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so, they went to seven games in the first round. They scored 3.86 goals per game, which is a little bit better than us, who scored 3.83. We were much better defensively, 2.67 to their 3.43 goals against. Their power play was terrible, 1 for 25. Our power play was really good, 5 for 19. Their penalty kill was really good, though, 89.7%. Ours was 83.3%, so should be interesting to see who ends up winning this second-round matchup. Definitely feel like it's a bit even, even if they do have an injury right now, but once Nedved's back, that's definitely going to give them a little bit of a boost. 
So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Hartford Whalers franchise mode. So in next episode, we'll take it back to the second round against the Pittsburgh Penguins as we look to make it to the conference finals for the first time. So I'm going to sing down below, and I'll see you guys next time.